various times in human history, people have tried to refashion humanity. The Roman emperors demanded that they be worshiped and the Christians refused to bow or to offer incense to Caesar. And they were persecuted for that, they were killed. The Soviet Union wanted to create a new man, the Homo Sovieticus, the Soviet man, who would no longer be part of a class society, but would be a brother, a brotherhood of working men and women. But this society collapsed just as the Roman Empire collapsed. And we saw it in our own lifetimes. You grew up in the Soviet Union. Can you tell us anything about this attempt to create a new type of man and why it failed? Yes, first, it failed because it was not based on the simple order of creation which God created. So God is the inventor, I mean, he, he in some way, he is the artist, the architect of the universe and of human life and human being, and he gave an order. And when you, when you not observe uh, the, uh, the function, the laws of of a being or of even of an instrument, uh, then it will it will um, collapse by time, and not work. And so the same when the communists built up a society completely materialistic, with denying the immortality of the soul, denying eternity, only the temporal materialistic view. This is against the nature of human being. This will not functioning for a long time. It could functioning for, and it functioned maybe 70 years, and then it collapsed. And even they proclaimed the eternal Soviet Union, Vechny Sovetsky Soyuz, the eternal communism, eternal. Even so, they did not believe in eternity. <laughs> And all other, other um, dictatorships as Hitler. Hitler spoke of the thousand-jähriges Reich, the millennial, or millennial uh, reign, and he collapsed after 12 years. Yeah. And so it will also occur uh, when people will establish such a society as the Homo Sovieticus. Uh, against uh, the plan of God. Well, some people have a sense that we are at the present moment experiencing one more version of this attempt to reshape and remake the human being. We call it perhaps globalism, but it's a globalism based on tremendous computer power, tremendous memory of computer chips which can record every purchase that you've made in your life so they can decide if you like a donut or an egg and they can get a profile of you over time that then could be helpful in determining what you might be afraid of what you might be attracted to and in this way the increasing information society with these global straddling technological companies, the technocracy, would seem to be merging the human person into some type of a, almost a global mind. Does this seem to be something that we should be concerned about? Of course, we are witnessing this, all of us, that we are even in our daily life and under a continuous control on our phones and now in the travels which we are doing and now with the new forced mandated vaccinations which are also a clear sign of a control so they can track us so these signs are a signs that uh, a person who is controlled continuously is not free and it is substantially uh, a slave then because you are not free you are controlled the slaves are controlled now, what you mentioned tracking 
but are you saying because you carry a card or a pass, or are you saying there's something in the vaccine itself? I don't know uh, this, but only that you are marked, you are, you are already written your, your number of your pass, green pass or the other pass is all your dates. And when you are traveling, it's already, you have to show this. Even when you are going to a supermarket, you have to show the green pass. And so, and this is recorded, of course. But you, you say this is a sign of not being free or being a slave, but isn't it a matter merely of being well-ordered and well-organized? No, it is apparently well-organized. It is well-organized. Uh, it has to be well-organized in order to, uh, to keep together a slave society. If you are, you are not well-organized, you cannot keep and control a mass slave society. But who then would be the controllers? And there's a phrase in Latin, quis custodiet ipsos custodes. Who yes. guards the guardians yes. themselves? Yes. How can we be sure that the masters, as it were, of this new, well-organized, orderly world, global society are benevolent, are wise, are kind and generous, rather than perhaps being malevolent, unkind, and actually exploiting the humanity that they have such total control over. It would be completely naive to assume that those who make such a well-ordered control are benevolent. Because uh, if you limit the freedom, it is not benevolent. I so much like the motto of the state of Massachusetts, live free or die. I think it's in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, excuse me, yeah. New Hampshire. And uh, where I was recently. Mm -hmm. And this is when I am starting to control someone. Yeah in such a way, it is in itself not benevolent because I'm controlling not children who are who cannot have uh, their reason. Then I have to control to protect them. But I, I'm controlling adult persons who have their own will, free mm. will, mm. Who, have, who have their own intellect. And so I'm uh, converting the society to a kind of or in a in a benevolent way, I would say, to little children who do not know how to reason, how to, to, to behave, or to slaves. But I'm more inclined that they treat us long, by time as slaves, with these beautiful expressions and pictures of protect us.